Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this evening. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord on this Tuesday night. Come on, 10 more seconds. Would you give him your best praise? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, let's magnify Jesus just a little bit longer. Let's lift the name of Jesus higher today. You're worthy of our praise. Worthy of our praise. The Lord bless you. Please be seated just for a couple of minutes. And I have enjoyed myself, amen, being in Dallas this weekend. First with uh, Brother Burkett on Friday night. And to be with you precious folks from Sunday morning and uh, tonight. And uh, this is the last night of the feast. And uh, we are believing, God, that the best is yet to come for New Life Church. Can you say amen? Yeah. Amen. Thank the Lord for his spirit. Thank the Lord for what we felt thus far. And uh, I believe God is not done yet. Yeah. Amen. I believe that there's a word from the Lord tonight. And the Lord's going to help us to receive it tonight. Amen. We give an honor to the angel of this house, great man of God. Yeah. Amen. New Life Church is blessed with a tremendous pastor. Yeah. Amen. We honor you, Pastor Stanley. And his lovely wife, Sister Stanley. I think on this appreciation month, we just started November, but I think we need to still give honor to whom honors do. Amen. You're blessed with a great pastor and first lady. Would you give God praise for the leadership of this great house? Amen. Appreciate these fine folks. Amen. We love them and uh, just their energy. I want to be like them when I grow up. Amen. I love these folks so much and appreciate them so much. And they have spoiled me this weekend. And uh, got the privilege to go to the bishop's house today for a wonderful meal. And thank you, First Lady, for spoiling me some more. Amen. Sister, First Lady can cook. Amen. So the devil's been having a bad weekend around here. with just some good old church and good food. Amen. And so I appreciate it. And I'm encouraged to go back home and run a couple of miles. If I have not preached all that I've consumed this weekend, I'll tend on running when I get back home. Got to lay aside every weight somehow, some way. <laughs> Amen. Played a little ball with the young people last night. Had a great time of fellowship. They beat us the first time, but we weren't going home with two losses. Amen. So we had to finish strong. But nonetheless, we had a great time of fellowship. I appreciate Brother and Sister Green very much. You got a great assistant and youth pastor. Amen. Love this man of God. He's a great friend. Appreciate him. And all the elders on the platform and their precious family, would you give God praise one more time for your great leadership? We honor them tonight. Amen. Sister Sherlane, I love you. Amen. You're an awesome woman of God. I appreciate you so much. She's great friends of, amen, brother and sister Minto back home who serves as our associate pastor and associate pastor's wife. And uh, they go way back, and I appreciate her and her friendship and what she is to this church. She's dynamite. She's powerful. Amen. Appreciate her very much and glad to call her a friend and brother and sister Beckford and their team. And uh, they're, they're just a gift from God. Amen. And New Life Church, you're blessed with tremendous people. Amen. So never take it lightly. Never take it for granted. Amen. Precious people that just buys into the vision of this church and supports and, and lifts up uh, the ministry in whatever way, in whatever capacity. And for that, you are tremendously blessed. It is such a blessing to see my good friend, brother and sister Snyder. Amen. Love these folks so much. These guys are the real deal. Amen. Pastor in a great church in Irvine, Texas, and I appreciate him so much. He's a great friend of my pastor, Bishop Mike Mitchell in Brooklyn, and I appreciate him. And it's good to see Marcus. Amen. We uh, go back a couple of years ago. I remember Marcus in uh, Virginia Youth Camp. Amen. I was preaching that week, and God filled him with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and he's now the youth leader of the church. Ain't God good. Appreciate him and the hand of God that's on his life. And I love Brother and Sister Snyder very much. And they're the real deal. I appreciate you guys being here tonight. I love you, friend. Amen. Well, you got one more tonight? Yeah. Amen. My voice is a little bit shot, but I tend on preaching everything that I got tonight. So let's have some church. Would you stand to your feet? Yeah. Amen. I invite your attention to the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 12. And uh, we'll read verses 25 through 30, and then we'll jump to the book of James, chapter number 4, and uh, read verse number 17. 1 Kings, chapter number 12, verses 25 through 30. Why don't we just give the devil a bad night tonight? Yeah. Amen. 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 So we're going to have a little church, and uh, 
let the Holy Ghost do its thing. And uh, I am so thankful for this church. Thank you so much for your hospitality and your love. And uh, man, I'm looking forward to coming back already. All right. Hey, Lord. I guess I'm all right, Bishop. <laughs> Amen. And Lord's willing, hopefully we're going to try to bring Sister Jolly and the boys. They will love you guys down here. Amen. I can't eat all that food all by myself. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Kings chapter number 12, verses 25 through 30. When you find it, can you say amen? amen. The word of the Lord reads, Then Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein, and went out from thence and built Penuel. Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much. Somebody say too much. It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. James chapter 4, verse number 17, one verse in your hearing tonight. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good... And doeth it not to him, it is sin. Tonight I want to focus my attention on verses 28 and number 30. The Bible declares the king took counsel and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. And two verses later, the Bible says that this thing, God sees it and he calls it sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. Now, we must understand that Jerusalem is called the city of uh, worship. It is where David takes the Ark of the Covenant and he places it back into the city. So Jerusalem is considered to be the city of worship. So in other words, the king tells the people, it is too much for you to go to the place of worship. And the king sees this in verse 30 and he calls it sin. And James says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I want to preach with the help of the Holy Ghost tonight to wrap up this revival. Amen. On this subject tonight, the danger of a convenient church. The danger of a convenient church. Would you raise your hands with me one more time? Would you pray that the Lord will touch my body and my voice? And would you pray, amen, that the Holy Ghost will have its way in this house? Would you lift your voice, people of God, and pray one more time? In anticipation for what the Holy Ghost wants to do in this church and wants to do in your life. Would you pray like apostolics? Would you pray with passion and energy and fervency? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for an open door of utterance to declare the mysteries of Christ tonight. We pray for a supernatural demonstration of your power and your spirit. For it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. Satan, the Lord rebukes you in this house. I bind every spirit of distraction. I bind every principality and power that will oppose itself against the word of God, the will of God, the move of God in this house tonight. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We pray for an impartation of your word. We pray for signs, wonders, and miracles to follow the preached word of God tonight. Be thou glorified in this house and let your people be edified. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory. Would you clap your hands if you believe that God is going to do something supernatural and powerful and new in your life? Come on, would you shout one more time? Would you lift your voice one more time? Would you let out a shout of praise? Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. And a 200 sword in your hand. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated tonight. First and second kings follow immediately upon the history recorded in first and second Samuel. Together these four books selectively cover the entire history of the kings of Israel and Judah. 
First and Second Kings were originally a single volume in the Hebrew Old Testament. Therefore, the issue of authorship relates to them as one book. These books cover four centuries of that history, from the time of King Solomon to the time of the Babylonian exile. First Kings, First Kings alone covers about 120 years. Solomon's reign of 40 years and approximately the first 80 years after the kingdom was divided. First and second kings were written to provide the Hebrew people in the Babylonian exile with a prophetic interpretation of their history so that they will understand why the nation split. The author emphasizes that the division and collapse of Israel and Judah were the direct consequence of idolatry and unrighteousness on the part of the kings and the nation as a whole. In view of this fact, the author evaluates the success or failure of each king according to his faithfulness or unfaithfulness to God and the covenant. No matter what success a king had politically or economically, he was judged a failure if he did not uphold the covenant. This prophetic understanding was presented so that the captives might forever turn away from idolatry, turn to God, and follow his commandments in future generations. The Bible tells us that we read tonight in the book of 1 Kings about Jeroboam and his reign over Israel after the death of Solomon. We understand through scripture that after Solomon's death that the Hebrew nation split into two kingdoms. We have the northern kingdom which had ten tribes and was called Israel and first ruled by Jeroboam. The southern kingdom, which was the second tribe, was called Judah and was first ruled by Rehoboam, Solomon's son. The division continued until the ten northern tribes were taken into captivity and the southern kingdom was carried into captivity by the Babylonians. The story of Israel and Judah reveals their persistence in breaking God's covenant. The Bible indicates that all the kings of the northern kingdom did evil in the eyes of the Lord. The majority of the kings of Judah departed from the covenant. Only a few kings of Judah, notably Hezekiah and Josiah, the Bible specifically says, did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I pause tonight to speak of against the spirit of the age tonight to close out this revival service to declare to the new light church tonight that it must be said of us as apostolics that God wants to notarize this end time church he wants to notarize us he wants to put his stamp of approval on us he wants to seal us amen with this seal that that when everybody else seems like they're departing from the ways of God, let it be said about us as Jesus' name, apostolic people of God, that whatever happens, no matter what culture says and society says, no matter what the White House says or the courthouse declares or the Congress declares, we as a church will stand and do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Well, I didn't get a lot of amen, so I feel like preaching this for a little bit right here. You can take this whole world, but I would rather stand on what the book says. Because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Bible says thy word shall never pass. Come on, somebody. I've come to tell you, in an always changing world, the church has got to remain what it is and stand for what they believe about a God that says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore and he's a God that changed not and so we must stand on the word of God what's to notarize the church tonight you see the purpose of getting something notarized is usually to make sure that the person signing a document is the person they say they are the seal is issued by the state to a specific notary after a background check. 
So the notary is also identified on the document. If there's any problem with the document, then the notary's record can be checked. And I believe, Brother Snyder, in these last and closing days, what God, amen, what is happening in the natural is always a mirror or a reflect of what God is doing in the spirit. I feel like preaching in this house tonight. I believe in these last days, First Lady, that God is doing background checks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's, re he's revealing the content of man's heart. That when everything it can be shaken, it's being shaken. Everything that is changing, everybody that's compromising, some that are falling by the wayside, some are backsliding, some are compromising. Some, amen, they feel like they were there strong one day, but now they're weary and shaky another moment. Can I tell you that God is allowing things to take place, amen, in these last and closing days in the church to reveal the content of man's heart. He's looking for the no Notary seal. He's separating the real from the fake. And that's why your Bible says that the hours come. And now is that hour when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Worshippers that don't need the beat of a drum to stimulate your praise. Worshippers that don't need the sound of a keyboard that will make you lift your hands and give God glory. Worshippers that don't need a praise and worship leader to coach you on how to shout and how to dance or how to worship. Oh no. But worshippers that understand that I've got the seal of God on my life and I've got the power of his spirit within me so if you want to sit down on this Tuesday night and not worship him that's your business but as for me in my house I'm going to give him praise I'm going to give him glory I'm going to give him the worship that he so deserves I wonder if you can give him your best praise for the next 20 seconds tonight. Devil, you're getting ready to have a bad night tonight because this place is electrified with apostolic worshipers and apostolic praisers. You may be seated. The shipwreck of Solomon is surely the most terrible tragedy in all the world. For if ever there was a shining type of Christ in the Old Testament church, it was Solomon. If ever anyone was once enlightened and had tasted the heavenly gift and was made a partaker of the Holy Ghost and the, tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, it was Solomon. If ever any young saint sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things added unto him, it was Solomon. If ever there was one who could be said that he had attained and was already perfect, it was Solomon. If ever ship set sail on a sunny morning, but all that was left of her was a board or two on shore. That same night, that ship was Solomon. A board or two of rare and precious wood. Indeed, and some of them richly worked and overlaid with silver and gold. It was Solomon with his sermons. It was Solomon with his prayers. It was Solomon with his proverbs. It was Solomon with his songs. It was Solomon with his temple. If ever a blazing lighthouse was set up in the sea of life to warn every man and to teach every man, that lighthouse was Solomon. But the same chapter that mentions Solomon's apostasy speaks of his death without any indication that he had repented or returned to God. 
The scripture records David's warning to his son Solomon. But if thou forsake God, he will cast thee off forever. The scriptural truth revealed here is that Solomon, who was once in grace, did not remain in grace. Oh, yes. Which means you can start off right, but you can end wrong. Lord, have mercy. But I think it ought to encourage New Life Church on this Tuesday night tonight that by the grace of God, how I started is exactly how I'm going to finish. And what the Holy Ghost wanted me to tell you tonight is that we need the body of Christ to have a made up mind and look the spirit of the world in the face and say, as for me and my house, we're going to finish what God has started in us. Oh, I feel like preaching tonight. Somebody hear me in the Holy Ghost. You've come too far to backslide now. You prayed too many prayers to give up now. You fought too much hell in your life to quit now. You cried too many tears to lose it now. He that started a good work in me, he's gonna finish. Devil have come too far. He's gonna finish what he started in my life. Come on, give your neighbor a high five and tell him I'm gonna finish. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care what hell comes in your life. I don't care the storms and the struggles. You want to lift your hands and say backsliding is not an option. Going back to Egypt is not an option. I made up my mind. For God I live. And for God I'm going to die. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish what God has started in my life. Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the noon time. Every moment of the day, give me Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. Come on, somebody. Come hell or high water. I'm going to serve the Lord. Clap your hands and magnify him in this house. God, I feel like running in this house tonight. You see that the word of God warns us here. Let him that thinketh he standeth. Somebody help me tonight. Take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. That deserves a praise break right there. But God is faithful. I know it's Tuesday night and you may be tired, but let's just give the devil a bad night tonight. No matter how low I was, no matter the struggles in my life, when I wasn't faithful to him, he was faithful to me. But God is faithful. You can sit there all you want.
want to act like God hasn't done anything for you. You can sit there and fold your hands and cross your legs all you want to. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, he's a faithful God. I feel like shouting tonight. He's a faithful God. I feel like praising him tonight. He's a faithful God. Praise him because he's faithful. I jump because he's faithful. I run because he's faithful. I clap my hands because he's faithful. I shout because he is faithful. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able? <laughs> but with the temptation, also make a way of escape. That you may be able to bear it. <laughs> In other words, what Paul was trying to say is that if God allowed you to go through it, that means you can handle it. I wish I was in the right church on this Tuesday night. If God allowed you to go through what you're going through, that means you can handle it. And if you can handle it, God is going to bring you out of it because greater is he I'm gonna run all by myself. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if God be for us, yeah, who can be against us? first king of Israel of the ten northern tribes a state established after the death of Solomon the Bible says that he is the son of Nabat and Zeruah Jeroboam reigned over Israel for 22 years he first appears in the biblical record as Solomon's servant the officer over all the labor force of the house of Joseph one day as Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet by the name of Ahijah, the shallow knight, met him on the road and confronted him with an unaided parable. The Bible says that this prophet who was wearing a new garment, he took hold of the garment and he tore it into 12 pieces. He says to Jeroboam, I want you to take for yourself 10 pieces. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and I will give ten tribes to you. The prophet warns Jeroboam, if you hearken unto all that I commanded, if you walk in the ways of God, and do that which is right in his sight, if you keep his statutes and his commandments as David did, then God will build you a house just like David, and all of Israel shall be yours. Bible says that when Solomon learned of the prophet's words, he sought to kill Jeroboam. Jeroboam had to flee to Egypt where he was granted political safety. And after the death of Solomon, Jeroboam risked returning to his native Palestine. Solomon's kingdom was outwardly rich. It was prosperous and thriving. But the great building projects he undertook were accomplished by forced labor and high taxes and other oppressive measures. Discontinent and unrest existed throughout Solomon's kingdom. When the great king died, the kingdom became a powder keg awaiting a spark. The occasion for the explosion. 
the tearing of the ten northern tribes from Solomon's successor came because of the foolish insensitivity of Solomon's son Rehoboam. Listen tonight. The Bible tells us that Rehoboam had gone down to Shechem to be anointed as the new king. A delegation or a congregation led by Jeroboam who had returned from Egypt following Solomon's death said to Rehoboam, now your father made our yoke heavy for us. Now, therefore, if you will lighten up the load of the service, we will stay and we will serve you. In other words, don't ask us to do more than we don't want to do. Don't ask us, amen, to sacrifice as much as our father David did. And that's just like the spirit that's trying to attack the apostolic church in these last days. It's a spirit, amen, that will try to encourage you or convince you that you don't have to sacrifice as much as the previous generation did. All those prayer meetings, it ain't necessary. All those extra night of revivals, that ain't necessary. It's a spirit that will try to encourage you you don't gotta go so far you don't gotta pay that price are you hearing me in the Holy Ghost tonight you don't have to sacrifice as much as David did but I feel like preaching can I just be on you Pastor Mo just for a little bit tonight and preach to my generation and the generation that's before me tonight to tell you you ought to thank God for the man of God that's on your life Can I just go on you, Pastor Mona, just for five minutes and preach to some teenager tonight? You better thank God that God has put a real man of God in your life. You better thank God for the elders of the church. Thank God for the mothers of Zion that God has placed in your life. pastors after my own heart that will tell you not what you want to hear but what you need to hear amen and it's trying to convince a generation of young people amen that they don't need a pastor in their life but I've come to sound the alarm before I get on a plane tomorrow morning to let you know that everybody needs a man of God in their life Oh, I'm preaching better than your response right now. Everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs apostolic covering. Everybody needs a man of God in their life. Didn't the Bible say that Moses, he was hit of his parents for three months because they saw that he was a proper child. And Brother Snyder, hell wants nothing more than a generation of young people, than a church that's identified as proper. He's not gonna mess with the people that he already has, but he's after those that are labeled proper. Yes. He's after a generation of young people. I just feel like I'm at a youth camp, so I'm just going to flow in the Holy Ghost tonight. Oh, he's after a generation of young people that will try to convince you. Hey, Amen. You don't need that man of God in your life. You don't need to listen to all that preaching and teaching. I've come to sound the alarm one more time in the Holy Ghost to tell you if you got somebody in your life that's speaking against the man of God in your life, if you got friends in that you are connected to on Facebook, if you got people in your life that will try to speak against what God has put in this man of God's mouth to tell you it's time to choose some new friends. I know it ain't popular, but I'm going to preach what the Holy Ghost gave me tonight. You better thank God that God has put a man of God in your life. In an ever-changing world, you better thank God for a man of God that's going to preach straight to you. Amen. We need people in the church that's going to have a spirit that's going to say, Pastor, preach to me. 
whether you like it or not sometimes the word's gonna make you shout sometimes the word's gonna make you dance sometimes the word's gonna make you run the aisles but there's other times the word will put you flat on your face there's other times that the spirit of the Lord by the word of God will draw you to an altar of conviction in a place of consecration. Are you hearing me tonight? You better thank God for the voice of God in your life. All kind of laws are passing and all kind of rights or be an anthem. You better hear this preacher tonight. I'm gonna thank God for the word of God. I don't care what society is saying. I don't care what laws are passing. What's right is still right according to the word of God. Amen. And in a society where they're telling you that you don't have to wait until you get married. Amen. To choose your virginity. The devil is a liar. You better hear what the apostolic church is all about. In a generation that says that men can love men and women can love women. I've come to sound the alarm one more time to tell you that in God's order he made Adam and Eve not Adam and Steve and if you're a man you ought to love a woman and if you're a woman you ought to love a man I feel like shouting in this house tonight to tell you it still matters what the book says it's still the right way still matters what you believe everybody's claiming to be a Christian everybody's claiming to be a churchgoer church and Christianity has become the popular thing now but the real question is what kind of Christian are you in this culture and day and age this emergent generation I've come to tell you don't you compromise who you are that we are apostolic and it matters it matters what you believe can i dig the stakes just a little bit deeper tonight it matters what you believe that repentance amen and water baptism in the name of jesus and the infilling of the holy ghost it still matters what you believe except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god still matters what you believe and it Peter said when Jesus was passing through the coast of Caesarea Philippi he said who do men say that I am and Peter said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus looked at him and he says flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven and Peter I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom thou art Peter and upon this rock what's the rock it's a revelation of who you said I am Christ Jesus Jesus noticed that he can trust Peter because now Jesus knows that Peter knows who he really is and Jesus is not going to give nobody no keys to somebody that he doesn't know or who doesn't know him oh but Peter oh you know who I am I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom and whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven and this rock the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church that I will build and establish on the rock Christ Jesus Moses was hit of his parents for three months because they saw that he was a proper child. And when it came to years, the Bible says that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. How did Moses come to that understanding? How did Moses come to say that? It's because he had somebody in his life that knew how to hide him. Oh God, 
he had somebody in his life, Bishop, that knew how to hide him. Thank you, Jacobeb, for understanding that Moses, there was a decree that was sent to kill every male child. Listen, the Nile River was necessary. He could not bypass the Nile River. You can't escape culture. You got to get exposed to sin. You got to go back to school, young people. You got to be exposed to the systems of this world. But you don't have to be a part of it. If you have somebody in your life that can build you a basket and that's going to hide you so that when you come to years, you can stand and say, I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I'd rather be apostolic. I'm a Hebrew. I'd rather be a child of God. And I thank God for my pastor, Bishop Mike Mitchell, a good friend of Pastor Snyder here. I thank God at 11 years old, I walked into New Life Tabernacle in Brooklyn. Didn't know what God had in my life. Had no sense of direction as to what God was going to do in my life. But I had a man of God that knew how to hide me. And at the tender age of 11 years old, God filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I was baptized in Jesus' name. And then Bishop Mike Mitchell started hiding me at 11 years old. He sat me down many times. Now listen, Jolly, you listen to me carefully. You can't date every girl. You can't hang out with certain crowds. You can't do this and you can't do that. Gave me a laundry list of things that I could not do. And I felt to say, my God, I grew up becoming a teenager, being a mentor, now being a, a, he being a spiritual father in my life. I lost many friends because they thought I wasn't cool because I was a pastor's pet. Everything he said I had to do. Amen. But there was something in my life, Brother Snyder. He said, Jolly, listen to me, son. You may not understand it now but there's an anointing on your life there's a call of God on your life they can run and do whatever they want to do but my job is to hide you and cover you because there's destiny in your life and God's gonna use you to do great things I grew up 16, 17, 18 years old. Bishop, I didn't understand all the times he said no. Sometimes I went home and I kicked against the pricks. My flesh rose up and said, it's not right. He's letting everybody else do what he wants to do. But everything is no for me. I'm not saying that he was a mean guy. No, he wasn't. He's the coolest pastor, the best pastor in the world. He's good to hang out with and we did a lot of things. But it was the times what my flesh wanted to do when daddy stepped in and said no jolly you can't date certain girls you can't go there come home straight from school take that person out of your phone don't connect with that person on social media are you hearing me today I grew up under, not understanding why but I'm here on a Tuesday night in Garland Texas at New Life Church to tell you that I'm 35 years old and I'm the man that I am today I'm the husband that I am today I'm the father that I am today I'm the preacher that I am today because I had a man of God in my life that knew how to hide me I had a pastor that knew how to cover me Jeroboam was so concerned, I'm wrapping up, that the people of Israel might return to the house of David if they continue to journey to Jerusalem for the festivals and the observations of Solomon's temple. Yeah, he had to think quick and he had to think fast. So he proposed an alternative form of worship that was idolatrous in the eyes of God. Your Bible says that the king looked at the people and he said, people, 
It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Stay here. Here are your gods which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And one calf was erected in Bethel and the other was erected in Dan. Jerusalem, it is the city that's established as the place of worship. It was known as the city of David. He made it a religious, religious capital of the nation. It is here that he moved the Ark of the Covenant and he placed it into the tabernacle. David chose it as a capital because it was centrally located between the northern and the southern tribes. Geographically, it was convenient for the entire nation. The city made it easy to defend because it was located on top of a hill. This is where David gets the writings, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. He was talking about Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is the place of worship. It is the same place in the book of Acts where Jesus through the Holy Ghost have given commandments to his apostles whom he had chosen and commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but stay here and wait for the promise of the Father. And the apostles said, Lord, we don't understand. When are you going to restore again the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put into his power. Power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But you got to stay in Jerusalem. I'm done, but hear it loud and hear it clear. I've come to wrap it all up on this night of revival to let you know that the spirit that we are fighting in the apostolic church is the spirit of Jeroboam that will try to make worship convenient. It is a spirit that will try to convince you that going to Jerusalem is too much. You don't have to go all the way to the city of worship. Just let me make church convenient for you. You don't got to shout when you come to church. That's too much. You don't got to dance when you come to church. That's too much. You don't got to sing and worship and clap your hands when you come to church. That is too much. May I suggest to the people of God tonight that worship becomes sin when it is mixed with convenience hear it loud James said to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not it is sin you don't gotta lie cheat and steal to commit a sin all you gotta do is come to church and not praise your God and not worship it is sin I don't care how tired you are. Praise is not multiple choice. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. As the praise team comes, you hear me tonight. Worship is not designed to be convenient. Worship is a commandment. Praise wasn't created to make you comfortable. Praise is a commandment. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the soldier and harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything that has breath. Listen. If you don't hear anything else in this message tonight, you hear it loud. 
worship becomes sin when it is mixed with convenience I'm going to say it one more time tonight worship becomes sin when it is mixed with convenience can you imagine being a part of an apostolic church and all the dancing, shouting, and clapping their hands, and worshiping, and people getting the Holy Ghost, and people being healed and delivered. Can you imagine the king saying, it's too much? And that is the spirit that's trying to get a hold of the apostolic church tonight. It's a spirit that want to say, all this singing, it's too much all that dancing too much that talking in tongues too much all that holiness living too much but I've come to let Jeroboam know on this Tuesday night of revival at New Life Church Jeroboam devil it's not too much it's not too much to dance. It's not too much to shout. It's not too much to worship. It's not too much to give him praise. It's not too much. I want you to take one person by the hand. Look at them in the face and say, neighbor, I need some room tonight. You might as well make a little bit of room tonight. Because I feel a Holy Ghost party. I feel like shouting tonight. I feel like praising him tonight. I feel like being in the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel like worshiping Jesus tonight. It's not too much. It's not too much. It's not too much. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. I want you to grab one more person by the hand. I'm getting ready to take my seat. Look at somebody in the face and say, neighbor, for the next 60 seconds. Come on, talk to somebody. Say, for the next 60 seconds, I'm going to show you tonight that it's not too much. You might as well get out of my way tonight. I'm gonna show you how to really praise him. I'm gonna show you how to really worship. I'm gonna show you how to really dance. I'm gonna show you it's not too much. 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 are miracles
Ghost. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I'm going to prophesy in the name of Jesus. But there's miracles in this house on this Tuesday night. Somebody's getting ready to be healed in their body tonight. Somebody's getting ready for their financial status to be turned around tonight. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost, there's miracles in this room right now. And I want you to lift your hands and I want you to open up your mouth and praise God like your miracle depends on it. By the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, receive your healing, receive your miracle, receive your blessing, receive your breakthrough, receive it, receive it. Praise it one more time. Shout one more time. Worship him one more time. It's not too much. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. in this house would you extend your hand and put your hand on someone's shoulder Jude says we must pray in the Holy Ghost now let's turn our worship into prayer right now come on apostolics pray in the Holy Ghost receive your miracle somebody's being healed in their body right now somebody's being touched by God right now Receive it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. He lama hasota hoya. He ama hasota ya lama hea. He ala la 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 ho ya lama hosha. Yes. 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 Lay hands on somebody and pray. Find somebody and pray tonight. 